Now, COVID-19 lockdowns gave many people food for thought about where they live. Some have decided to leave big cities as remote work becomes more widespread. Despite all that, in the year to the end of November, the number of residential property sales in France actually fell by 4%. In the Paris region, transactions slumped by 15%. Property prices at the end of September were higher than a year earlier, but they had begun to dip in the middle of 2020. So what does all of that mean for foreign buyers of property in France? Let's speak now to property consultant Adrian Leeds, whose company helps American buyers here. Uh, Adrian, some of our viewers may also recognise you from the show House Hunters International. Thanks for speaking to us. Uh, the, national, the national picture here in France is that home sales were down last year. But has that applied to your buyers as well? Are they as eager as ever to find property here? Our, our clients uh, are enormously uh, busy. We are insane with new clients, as a matter of fact, uh, but most of our clients are North Americans, so we don't really deal too much with the French market at all. Uh, they are very intent on finding homes in France, um, all over France, Paris, the Côte d'Azur, as well as um, you know other cities in France, Bordeaux, for example. And um, no, our sales are up, up, up. So what's driving that demand? We've seen the, the pandemic has affected some people's decisions in buying property. What's driving your, your clients? Oh, I think it's twofold. First of all, there's the political climate in the United States that has uh, kept our market really active for the last four years under the Trump administration because most people who are looking to make a move outside of the U.S. are pretty much on the left uh, um, politically. Um, but with COVID, you know, they're, they can't get here. They're frustrated. They're sitting at home, surfing, looking at properties, dreaming about their future. And so they're really anxious to make a move. And what's happening is that literally our clients are buying sight unseen. I mean, this has never really happened to us before, not at this scale. That's a big change. How do you help people to find a house when they're not going to be able to visit it? Well, fortunately, we're in a good position because our clients come to us and hire us to actually go ahead and find the property for them and ensure that they're making the best decision they can make. So they trust us to find the property. Uh, we, you know, take photos, we do videos, we do FaceTime with them. We do all the due diligence on the documentation. And in the end, they really trust that they've got a good property in hand and they're willing to go ahead with it. I have a client buying a 7 million euro chateau, sight unseen. Uh, I think that's pretty amazing. It certainly is. Is that your typical buyer of these people that have, you know, perhaps a lot of money and it's not perhaps such a big deal for them to buy a property without seeing it? Uh, no, I would not say that's our typical buyer. No, not at all. <clears throat> our buyers start from the, you know, small studio, pied de terre um, to a property in Paris that's worth a few million. They really run the gamut. But uh, what's happened is a lot of our buyers are now moving out of Paris and into other parts of France because Paris property has become very expensive, for one thing. And for another thing, the rental market in Paris has gotten to the point where they, you know, they can't legally rent a secondary property short term. So it means they can't generate any revenue to cover their costs. So a lot of our clients have now moved down to the Côte d'Azur, to Nice, where they can at least rent short term for up to six years. And uh, that's a big bonus for them. It means that they can buy something now, rent it for a few years, and then eventually move into it like a you know retirement home. And is that a common pattern then, the people, your typical buyer, is that somebody who's perhaps a few years away from retirement thinking about making a full-time move to France? Our buyers do tend to be older, uh, 50 years old and up. Uh, they are maybe empty nesters, first and foremost. They've made some money. They're in business for themselves, possibly, and they want to diversify for another reason in a different currency. So that's another reason to buy in France. But yes, they're very anxious to get here. And so they're buying now with an idea that in the future, they'll eventually move into it. Of course, we do have buyers who are just moving over as fast as they can, but they can't get a visa right now. The visa office isn't open. 
So what does that make you, I suppose, reflect on the year to come? If you've had this big demand, is there a chance these buyers will be perhaps a bit more cautious as we don't really have a clear picture on travel and when they'll be able to get to the property that they either have bought or are buying? <laughs> Stephen, they don't seem to care. They assume that with the vaccine that they will be able to travel sometime in the next few months or by the end of the year. They don't seem to care that the property will be vacant for a while. They're just really anxious to make this move. I am doing consultations every single day and lots of group consultations on Zoom and webinars and other things like that because the demand is just seriously overwhelming. Wow. OK, well, great to speak to you, Adrian Leeds, property consultant, joining us there with a picture of how uh, foreign buyers are looking at the property market here in France.